and here we are again. Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another awesome episode of Gothically Yours, Professor M. I'm Professor M. And if you're wondering where I'm broadcasting from today, you're, I am broadcasting from my kitchen. Yes, you are in my kitchen. The stove you just saw is right behind me. And there's always time for tea. Mm. I know someone's going to ask me, what brand are you drinking? This one's Stash. Okay. I want to put some honey in there. All right. Today's very special episode has to deal with something I keep running into time and time and time and time and time and time and time again on the interweb. That's question that it's like, do I need to have a lecture? Oh, do I need to have a lecture on this very subject? I thought to myself, yes, I do. The question came up, how do I know that I'm a goth? It's one of those uh, moments that I have to think to myself, okay, it is time, professor. It is time to have a lecture on how do I know that I'm a goth? Well, today is a very special episode because if you look down in front of me, there are 10 questions that you need to answer. Now, I'm going to tell you, take the quiz, my gothic quiz. If you can answer all 10 of them, consider yourself a full-blown goth, as gothy as you can get. Hopefully, you can get as many points as I can get. And if you're an elder goth, you should ace this exam in no time. If you're a baby bat tuning in, which I can't wait to find out how many baby bats are tuning in, uh, leave a comment down below. What was your score on this quiz? If you get eight out of 10, consider yourself goth. Mm -hmm. This is true. If you get uh, six out of the 10, consider yourself uh, darkly inclined. How's that? If you get less than four, I would say you just like dark aesthetics, really. Mm. Are you ready? They're not easy. I want to put some honey in that. Let me do that. I'm putting honey in my tea. I love it. Let's begin. Mm. Perfection. I must tell you, this is not an easy quiz. So get your little pens and pencils and quills out. Get your, they say, <laughs> ink. <laughs> this is a very important question. And maybe the elder goths would get this before the baby bats get this one. Can you sit in a cemetery and eat your lunch? That's question number one. If you could say yes, give yourself a point. If you say no, I'm going to ask you a second question. Would you? Very important. I have maybe 40 or 50 times in my life I have eaten in a cemetery uh, within a car. And I was at a workplace. And I would just get my takeout, be in the car, go over to the local cemetery, sit and eat it. And when I got tired of looking at the inscriptions of the stones, I would move the car and read some more inscriptions. But that's a very important question. Can you sit in a cemetery or have you ever been in a cemetery and have eaten a breakfast, lunch or dinner? Have you ever done, have you ever done that? Uh, we have a goth sister. Her name is Madam Absence. If you've never checked out her channel, check her out. She is so awesome. Uh, she has had many birthday parties in cemeteries. So I envy her for that. She's got all her goth friends together. That is question number one. Pretty gothy there. Uh, she also has, before I, before I go into this, she has an embalming table in her kitchen or dining room that they eat off of, from what I know, uh, from watching the videos. They said it weighs a ton. All right, that is question number one. Have you ever eaten in the cemetery? That's a pretty gothic thing to ask. 
Question number two, which is vital for all those out there in the goth scene. Do you listen to goth music? Ah, that's the, usually this is the first question that most goths would ask and say, oh, do you listen to goth music? Um, this is debatable. Some people say, oh, no, you don't have to. You can just dress the dress and, oh, did you see my sparkly? Did you check this out? Oh my gosh, this, this is a gift from my mom. Mom, I love you. Uh, my 73-year-old mother got me this. Check it out. Black diamonds. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the important thing is that this here is understanding that goth music is the basis for why we have the subculture in the first reason. Do you listen to any of these bands? You know, uh, do you listen to goth music? Do you like the, the Cure? Do you uh, like Bauhaus? Do you, do you like Susie and the Banshees? Those are the basics. Uh, do you like, um, you know, for me, it's ethereal. I, I love the Cockatoo Twins and a host of other bands with Frozen Autumn, I can go on from there and there and there. But anyways, do you listen to goth music? If you say yes, give yourself a point. If you say no, you have no points today. I'm going to get strict on that one. Oh, but Professor M. Oh, mm -mm -mm. this is my quiz. You sit down. Ink up that quill. Question number three, are you drawn to dark objects? <laughs> I have the twins out here today and Cedric is joining me. Where's David? David's around here somewhere. Are you drawn to dark objects? And I'm going to give you a list of things that I consider to be dark objects. Bats, gargoyles, skulls, spiders, coffins, cobwebs, freaky stuff taxidermy, jewelry, including any type of bat pins. Do you like uh, black cats? Do you like uh, animal skulls, ravens, crosses, pentagrams, uh, human hearts? That's, that's an unusual one. Uh, this is an, an Egyptian, an Egyptian si um, symbol uh, or Egyptian writing. I don't, that comes into play. Ghosts, black roses, apothecary bottles, snakes, wolves, and moons. I'd also add on to this more, if you like things that are dark, ethereal, morbid, or unsettling, and you have a very deep fondness for dark history. So are you drawn to dark objects? If you say yes to any of those, give yourself a point. If you say no, <laughs> You're taking the wrong quiz, <laughs> right? <laughs> mm. oh, okay, let's go on to number three. <laughs> mm. Oh, actually, number four, darling. Okay. You boys, you're screwing me up. <laughs> Do you love Halloween? And you think about it 365 days a year. I would say every day is Halloween. Should be your motto in life. It is for me. I mean, like right after all that Christmas and New Year's stuff. <laughs> and we get that out of the way. Uh, we just move right back into knowing that it's 300 and, you know, 60 some odd or 50 some odd days away, you know. Halloween. This is Halloween. Everybody make a scene. And I also have another question. Uh, the core of your house, do you have a lot of Halloween decorations up year-round? That's a very important question. Uh, do you find pumpkins, ghosts, goblins, mm, beautiful objects like this make beautiful home decor? <laughs> if you say yes or have anything on your walls plastered, including moths, um, spears, all kinds of, I don't know, torture devices. Who knows? But anyways, if you have all that stuff in your house, which I've seen many goths beautifully, beautifully, beautifully decorate their homes, consider yourself having one point. If you say, no, I don't have any of that material in my house, I would say, no, don't give yourself a point. 
However, my question is, do you love Halloween year-round? Yes or no? Point or no point? Okay. Number five, darling. Here we are. Oh, yes. <laughs> do you love dark literature? Romantic poetry? Um, things from the 19th century. I'm going to just pop off a list over here of things. Do you list, uh, do you, have you ever read anything by Bram Stoker? Uh, how about, um, I would say, let's see, I've worked on here. Uh, Byron. Uh, the next one would be Lovecraft. Poe, Edgar Allan Poe. Brontes, Shelley. Um, I guess she is a goth, she's as goth. No one is, I don't think anyone is as goth as Mary Shelley is. If you do not know about the story about Mary Shelley, um, many historians say it is true. And this is as gothy as I'm going to get. The story goes, according to many historians, Mary Shelley lost her virginity on her mother's grave. Do your homework. Check it out. There's also modern uh, gothic literature people that you should get into. Anne Rice, Stephen King, and Neil Gaiman for those who are on. If you listen or read any of that material, consider yourself a point, okay? If you do not, have nothing to do with gothic literature, give yourself no points. And I'm giving you credit, darling. We miss you. Which number is this? As you get older, I forget how to count. Isn't that awful? When we're, uh, five for five. <laughs> you should have told me. <laughs> number six here. You love dark movies. Do you love dark movies? I am a dark movie affectionate. And you can go all the way to the beginning of Metropolis, all the way up to the modern horror classics, or even to just the more milder materials. But I'm just going to list off. If you watch The Addams Family and you're a big, big, big Addams Family fan, whether that be anything that they've ever made, consider that um, in the mix. If you have a love for Tim Burton, uh, something to do with vampires, even traditional monster movies, I would say that's a thing. Uh, Interview with a Vampire is an excellent movie. The Crow, Corpse's Bride, Crimson Peak, Edward Scissorhands, uh, Sleepy Hollow, The Others, Frankenstein, and a host of other good movies that a goth would just find absolutely mm, tantalizing. If you have any desire or love any of those, including the Adams, consider that a point. Well, look at that. We have four cards left. Mm -hmm. mm. This one I absolutely love. <laughs> Are you interested in goth fashion? <laughs> Undubitably. The bottom line is, do you wear black daily or have a collection of black clothing as much as mine? I have three closets full. And I've been asked to show my house. Someone asked me, can you give us a tour of your home? Eventually, yes, I will. I'll show you all of this unique house. Mm. Now, I've got to get something out of the way. There are 46 different branches of goth today. I will repeat myself. There are 46 branches of goth today. I'm the only one out there that is defining this. So people, oh, there's a few branches. No, there are 46 different branches, and I am working on a video currently that I'm illustrating uh, to show what all 46 branches look like. Now, if you've never seen my Gothic family tree video, it is number two of my playlist. Just go all the way down to the bottom. You will find out what I'm doing and how I'm remaking it. Okay. There was 45 at that time. 46 grunge has been added. I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness, I've got to recreate this whole entire video again. But it wasn't like what I wanted it to be when I first made it. I was just doing a lecture. And this time, I'm going to just do it Professor M style. Where I show all the visuals like I do, which you love. That's why you tune into my program. Um, 
The most common type of goth clothing is traditional, followed by Victorian, vampire, and if you wear alternative clothes, cl uh, cl cl did I just say that? Clothes? If you, if you wear alternative clothes or something really edgy, I would say that's goth. And both goths, we focus on androgyny. Androgyny is a very, it's a fluid. We don't have, um, we don't, we have a point where there, we, it all flows together. You know, there's, you can have, there's a masculine form, there's a feminine form, and there's an androgyny form, which we can all participate in. <laughs> so, let's go down here. Okay, we have three left. I know you're getting excited, huh? This is the best quiz that you've had all year. Did you give yourself a point? Okay. Do you have a fondness for gothic things, including architecture? Cathedrals, anything medieval, medieval torture devices such as Iron Maidens, racks, graveyard, moonlit nights, walking in lonely and dark forest, looking at fog or anything misty, an atmosphere that feels very, uh, I say, longing or melancholy or something in a manner of romantic artists. I was told once that fog is just gothic breath. Isn't that beautiful? Gothic breath. What is fog? What are you looking at? Fog? No. Goth breath. Hmm. Ah, it's so funny. In the, the um, Little Nightmare Before Christmas, Dr. Finkelstein there has Sally make him some food. He's he tastes the soup and he goes, something like duck's breath or something like that. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, to cover up the, uh, <laughs> the knock, knock, you, knock you out, knock you out stuff that she put in there. Mm. There's always time for tea. Do you drink tea? Let me know down below. What are you drinking? Number nine on Professor M's list. Do you have a preference for the alternative world? This one stands out the most. I knew that I was alternative about 10 years old, listening to alternative radio. Um, if you haven't seen all my videos, go check them out. You'll find out a lot about me. But uh, I have a goth mom. Uh, she's just the core of my life. Uh, my father is not with us anymore, and today I have a tie-on that belongs to him. Check this out. I'm quite sure my mother had purchased this for him. It's as dark and as oh, beautiful as they come. I am surrounded by my father's essence today. Right, Dad? Good. Here, so do you have a preference for alt the alternative? My mom and my dad. Ah, you got it. Mm. Do you have a preference for the alternative world? And do you like stuff that is very hard to find, things that are rare and unusual. Like when you go shopping, you've just got it. The one thing that you like is extremely, extremely, extremely hard, rare, unusual to find. You always gravitate towards the rarest and most unusually hard to find stuff. And have you ever felt, and I gotta say this, as a preference to the alternative world, to alternative world have you ever felt like an outcast? Just didn't fit in. Mm. Uh, when I talk to the goths, they always seem to talk about high school or middle school or something. School was a very difficult chamber to be in. That, that whole Albert Crombley and Fitch and sunlight blaring through the windows and gym class just didn't settle very well compared to, say, you know heavy metal music and the alternative scene. And you just like everything that's alternative, but you also like everything that's really hard to get or it takes time to, I, I am so into the bizarre and hard to find stuff. I'm the only person I know that wants a skull of a two-headed calf. They exist. It's just a matter of getting one. 
And the last one on Professor M's top 10 questions, am I a goth or not? Do you have a goth mindset? Uh, you can also ask the question, uh, goths are associated with things that are free thinkers. We are free th freewheeling, free thinking and finger painting type of people. Um, we do not accept the violence and we don't care about people's uh, re religion, race or creed. This is very important. Uh, we don't mind gender bending and we accept you as you are mentality. Those that if you've answered all 10 and you've got a point for each and every one of my questions, congratulations, you are goth. If you've answered eight out of the 10, consider yourself very, very darkly inclined. Anything less than that, I would just say you like dark aesthetics. However, those are very important things for me to share. I wanted to give a shout out to a few individuals. I have a loving goth uh, individual who said, Professor M, can you make videos like every week for us? Oh, dearest sister, I would love to. Unfortunately, as a, as a college professor, I have a very intense work schedule. And this is now winter break, so I have off uh, some time to make this very quick video to slip in there. But I have uh, a passionate feeling that I would love to make many, many, many more Professor M videos to talk about goth stuff. Oh, and by the way, the survey came in. What would you want me to talk about? And I said, uh, like goth talks and or fashion and other stuff. Well, fashion was 52% of the people who voted and goth talks were 22%. And goth history came in at 22%, and only 4% said, I want to see another makeup video. <laughs> okay, so I'll cool it on the makeup, but, uh, and, oh, by the way, my Professor M uh, elder goth makeup thing is over like 6,000 views. And the other video that I did on uh, dark style has over like 9,600. Something like that. Anyways, if you're here today because of those videos, I love you. This is a quick shout out to all of my goth brothers and sisters who write me constantly, whether on or on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram under Gothically Yours Professor M. Come find me. You'll see fashion that you I don't post anywhere else. I want to give a shout out to all my goth brothers and sisters. Sarah Walker. The Moonflower Fairy, Sharon G. Ippel, Mandy Higgs, Samuel Penn, Belantro Celiandro, uh, Lauren uh, Nerval, Odo the Doll, Zetris, I think I, if I said that right, <laughs> Zetris, like Tetris, Zetris, Sanes, my Scandinavian sister. Yes, uh, Sanes has her own channel. Check her out. Cosmic Blue Mama, Jason Torres, Negrito, who I had inspired of the last Christmas video, uh, Noir Velours, Rick Onain, I, if I said that right. Um, Rick uh, writes me, occasional comments and I know he's he is a really cool goth guy um, keep them coming Rick I, I enjoy I enjoy reading your comments a father crow a sister who is now gone under the name EB we know who she is a eccentric and loving it Carlos Sebastian Beaker Kathy Patman Lynn Hankins, good to hear from you. Hedge Goat, Janie Brossman, Opus uh, Corvi, Swamp Fox, Belwar, Northern Way, Steph Does Stuff, Chip Cantley, Anna ASMR, Rich, Rich Luna Music, hey, it's Chris. Sir Gothington in Ireland. He's got his own Instagram. Check him out. Uh, Yoga Cheryl. 
anti them shadow among the masses now that's a goth name uh my goth brother who is into heavy metal god cats and bats check him out he's on instagram punk diva my sister back in connecticut she spins those records of alternativeness just for you if you haven't seen her before check out her videos uh, uh check out my video on how you can get to her link to her um radio station uh brian uh brian l k uh, uh lara uh, lauro the alchemist if i said that rightly and reflections yes thank you all for comments and wonderful things mentioned i hope that you've enjoyed this very special cup of tea that i'm having with me no <laughs> joking uh I hope that you enjoyed this very special quiz. And you know, it took me a while to make these cards. I put a lot of effort into this video. Mm. I want to wish all of my brothers and sisters out there a happy ghoul year. Signing off from my home, Gothic Leo's Professor M.